Hello, hello to all my thrift nieces, my flipperitas, and my frugalistas. I'm about to show you how we're going to flip these sriracha pants into this hot mama fall. Something like that. Hot girl, literally, because it's sriracha. Hot girl dress. That's not too much and not too little. Just enough sexy. It's almost giving apron, but whatever. The first thing I did was I cut off that waistband because I'm not going to need it. And these pants are also a 2X. 2X or larger will give you more material. Forget about the haters who get mad. They'll get over it. The next thing I do is I go ahead and I cut up the crotch area, the inner seam area, and I'm just going to cut all of that open because essentially this is just fabric that is fashioned into a certain way and what we're doing is refashioning it into another way so cutting it open and giving us the most amount of material is what we're going to do so once we get it cut open we are going to flip it out as you can see here in this next clip and then we're going to turn it inside out because we always want to work from the inside or the wrong side of the fabric and i'm just going to take my time to straighten it all out and you will see how much material we have to work with because ultimately it is just material and if you need it to be your size you can make it that way don't be mad at me do not be mad at me so anyways all i did was uh, straighten that out and then i'm going to take a um i'm going to take a skirt that fits me very well and because these are turned to the side i'm also going to turn that skirt to the side and I'm going to place it at the top where the pockets are as you can see here because I want to keep the pockets who doesn't love a dress that has pockets on it okay so next thing I'm going to do is lay that out flat and I'm going to take my very good singer sewing shears and I'm going to cut out about an inch around the outside of the skirt for seam allowance for a seam allowance and for seam allowance only. Sometimes I can make my seam allowance a little bit too big because of how I sew. I think I sew on a quarter inch seam allowance even though I cut it so big and sometimes it don't fit, but I'd rather it be a little too big than it be too little because I've done that too and it was tragic. So anyways, here you can see that I'm cutting a lot further down than the bottom of the skirt because I did want this to be a little longer. It is fall time and it's a little chilly outside sometimes and you know, I make short stuff and fitted stuff all the time. And I just wanted something that was almost knee length. I wanted it to be a little longer. This pattern is a little bit busy for that type of thing. But who cares? This is my remake. You don't have to do it. I'm going to fold that up. And I'm going to put that out of the way. The next thing we're going to work on is the top. And I want it. I love a keyhole top. If you on my TikTok, you know that I love a keyhole top. So I'm going to use this keyhole top as my pattern, but I'm not going to, as you'll see later on in the clip, I'm not going to um, cut it as low as that keyhole top because that's pretty revealing. But I'm going to take the remainder of the pants that I have left over and I'm going to fold them over in half because I do want two layers of this. And I'm going to show you why I want two layers of, of this in just a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut around this top um, I was worried about that hem at the bottom but then I stopped worrying about it because I remembered that I made my skirt a little longer so I'm gonna cut around this keyhole top until I get the shape that I want and as I was saying earlier I'm going to make the keyhole part just a little bit higher um, you know just for a little modesty every once in a while once I removed that, I also decided to go ahead and cut that hem off because I'm not going to need that. It's just going to be very bulky and it's just going to be in the way. So I just cut that off. When you open it up, you'll see you have a nice, subtle looking top thing to go with. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to begin to cut out the straps because I wanted a little extra support in the back. So I just cut two one inch strips and you will see where I will add those in for that extra support in the back for the boob area and all that good stuff. So I'm cutting out those one inch straps and that's what I have there and insert cameo from Drayden 
who was gonna give you a little creepy smile yep that's a bit creepy that's my son so for those one inch straps i'm gonna fold them in half and i'm going to just make a straight stitch all the way down and i did these for a uh, both straps and my hand is clearly in the way but all i'm doing is folding it and stitching it folding it and stitching it and i'm folding it and stitching it and some people like to pin i have a vendetta against pinning i don't know what it is i feel like it wastes so much time and i don't need to do it but if you are a beginner use those pins because this can be a little frustrating if you can't get it straight or something like that and i deal with those problems all the time but i'm a hard-headed and I don't like to use pins. I stab myself all the time. I only use them when I absolutely have to use them. So I just fold them in half, fold that little strap in half, and I just do a straight stitch straight down about a fourth inch seam allowance. I don't even know if that is correct. I just sew it, girl. Let me not tell you no stories. I have no idea what kind of seam allowance I'm using right here. I'm just making a stitch down the strap i don't know why this clip was so long either because it didn't have to be this long for you to see what i was doing but for those of you who may have needed to this long clip is for you thank god i'm almost done with this clip goodness gracious so my aunt bought me a little loop turner uh, to make my life easier she's also a seamstress so i'm just gonna stick that through there and i'm gonna hook it on which is out of frame of course and I'm going to pull it straight on through. And like I said, I did this for both of those straps. And in just a few seconds, you will see where I placed them. There's a strap. Isn't that nice? So for these side straps for the extra support, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up. Oops, not that part yet. I'm making a marking where I'm going to leave open when I do sew this. And I'll explain that in more detail in just a moment. But first, I'm going to place these straps. I'm going to open it up, place it on the inside, and stick that end of that strap right on the edge. And I'm going to fold it back over. And this is one of the few times you will see me use a pin because I need that to be pinned in place. You see, I'm fixing it back, um, lining it up so it can be perfectly aligned when I do go to sew it. There's that pin or whatever so now i'm going to place that other strap on the inside the same exact way and i'm going to place the end of the strap on the edge that way when i do sew it it will catch it and i don't have no problems when i go to flip this out those straps will be on the outside with no seam showing isn't that great little sewing tip for the girls so once i get those placed I'm going to pin that down and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to sew around the entirety of this thing. Watch where my hands go. I'm going to sew up, down, around, down, around, but I'm going to leave the bottom open because that's what I need to flip. And this is just a clip of me sewing that to get there. And I'm going to, uh, when I get to the corners, I'm going to raise my presser foot and I'm going to pivot it on that corner as you see me doing here once I get to the end. This is how you do a corner, ladies. Raise that press of foot, turn that garment around, and keep on sewing. And it's going to give you a great sharp corner. As you can see again, I'm going to turn that press of foot up, pivot it, put it back down, and then I'm going to keep on sewing. And I'm going to do this all the way around until I get to the bottom. And I actually forgot to leave my openings for my top strap. So off camera, I had to go back in with my seam ripper and open up those little spaces for me to be able to put my neck strap where it needed to go. And I think I recorded that. I'm not sure. But here we are flipping it back inside out. And as you can see, those straps are perfectly placed and they are where they need to be, where I needed them to be to give me some extra support. And now you can see the full construction of the top. I'm going to take that same loop turner and I'm going to take that strap. And this is where I needed to um, leave those spaces open in order to feed my neck strap through. And I'm also poking out those little corners too. But you'll see here, I'm going to, when am I going to do it? I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to take that loop turner and I'm going to feed it all the way through. That's the um, bottom hem from the bottom of the pants. And you see what I'm doing? That's where you're supposed to leave those spaces at, which I did not show because, you know, mishaps happen. 
and I'm going to feed that through and that's going to be the part that ties around my neck see how that works and that's my son in the background being a super saiyan so let's not mind him anyways so now we're going to move on to the skirt and all I'm going to do for the skirt is sew up those two sides that I cut easy peasy and that's what I'm doing now I'm using a zigzag stitch because we need this to stretch and this material does stretch and we need it to fit over our body. So I'm using a zigzag stitch and I'm just sewing down both sides of that skirt. And that's all I'm doing here. Again, I don't know why these clips are so long, but they are. And my son is a little louder than I think that I can be. So once I sew those up, I'm going to attach the top to the bottom that is gonna make it a dress so I'm gonna ball it all up and I'm gonna stuff it on the inside I had to decide which side I wanted to be the front and it was the side that was closest to the pockets so that I could reach my pockets so I lined it up and the shirt if you couldn't tell the shirt is facing downwards okay so when you place it inside the skirt make sure that it is upside down and you are matching up those raw edges because that's going to give you a seamless connection in the front when you do turn it inside out does that make sense i hope that that makes sense i really hope that that makes sense anywho so we are just lining it up all the way across um from the mid seam to the side seams and all we're going to do after we do that is give it a simple stitch across and I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch for that too because I do need this part to be you know stretchy and I don't need to pop no seams if I did a straight stitch it might pop some seams so we are just pinning that down and we are pinning that down and I don't like using pins but I use pins for this because I need it to be in a certain place okay so we're gonna go over to the machine and we are going to stitch that up and that's what I did so now you'll see what effect that gave once I flip it inside out you'll see the full dress isn't that cool wait look you see that seamlessness mm-hmm yeah 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 that was great and hopefully you can see the whole thing in just a second I don't know what I'm doing here but there's the dress right there we got a dress so the last thing to do would be to hem up those raw edges which would be the back part of the dress Blame he loves me okay the back part of the dress and the bottom of the dress the back part of the dress and the bottom hem which again i'm just folding over and i am just stitching and i'm using a zigzag stitch right on the edge which i really wish i could show you but i'll give you details on it in another video it's the perfect way to do a hem without all of the extra without having a serger you could just use a zigzag stitch when you fold it over it's right on the edge if you see where my presser foot is it's right on the edge and all i'm doing is zigzagging over the edge and over the base material if that makes sense like i said i will try to explain that further in another video and get a better angle to where you can see exactly what i'm doing i don't know why i chose this angle because all you can see is my nails which are fire i make those too in Rami on instagram and my arm is just in the way of what I'm doing. So next time I'll choose a better angle, but who has the energy to keep re-recording and re-recording and re-recording and re-recording? Not I said the cat, not I said the dog. I don't have the time, nor do I have the patience. So next video, I'll show you how to do a him without a searcher. How about that? Can we make a deal on that girl? All right, girl. Anyway, so I am just hemming this up and this is the last step before you got your hot sriracha hot girl hot mama i'm grown dress that i made it's giving a little bit of apron because of the busy pattern i think in a different material it might be something else but anyways i think it came out nice and here is the final outcome of this said dress it looks nice it's fitted it's given i'm grown but i am a mama i'm a mother no drama
I love the way it fits on me. I love the way it makes me bounce. Um, yeah, this is the high girl sriracha dress that probably most of you came from TikTok to come and see. So uh, I appreciate you ladies for vibing with me and for being silly with me. But here comes my outro and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.